Hello everybody, Sergeant Solch here and welcome back to How to Rust. And today I have a very special treat for you. I have Sergeant Solge's Double Stacked Wall House. This is something that I've been working on for quite a while now, trying to make sure I get it to at least 100% to where I know I can keep recreating it for you guys to make a good successful video. We're at that point. This is part one. This is a square house. I have part two coming up soon that will involve a circle house. It is slightly different, but Hopefully you guys will enjoy something like this. It is entirely possible on vanilla to do this. But if you are on vanilla, make sure you build this whole thing out of twig first. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to remove stuff. Or if you do, it's gonna take a lot longer. So starting off, this is the house. Not too bad, right? Go inside the door. We have our very first honeycomb. So you're probably wondering, Sergeant Solge, where's the double stacked walls? Right here. Check that out. Two doors in a very, very tight space, but they do work. We'll climb up this stair here, and then you can see double stacked walls. This whole outside layer here is all honeycombing. Now I couldn't get this last wall here, if you look at the pink crosshair, that's a part of the server that I'm on, it's a creative server. I couldn't get this wall to place here. Something about the way Face Punch has it set up, it won't let it go. However, even if they were to blow into this outer wall, they're still gonna have to blow this wall here or that wall here just to get through. And even if they blow this wall, they're still not gonna be able to squeeze through the space. So they hit this one, they hit that one, they hit that one, and then they hit this one. That's four walls to go through, eight C4, just to penetrate the base. Now, that's also not even adding in super honeycombing. If you were to fill these squares with roofs, then things are gonna get a lot more tricky. So this is pretty much it. Uh, one thing that I want to add though is if you don't want to do two stories, you can cap all this with roofs, like so. I would not recommend doing either stone or wood. Make sure you do sheet metal or armored, if you have the armored, um, because stone and wood can be soft side picked for the roof. And you guys definitely don't want that. So as you can see, it, it all goes down very, very easily. And next up, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and then we're gonna shoot some rockets at it and see how well it holds up. So starting off over here, I have it pretty much already set up. Basically, you're gonna start with the three by three in the center. This needs to be in a somewhat large flat area because you need to use the old door stacking method and go out three half moons, one, two, three, and stand on the last triangle facing away from the base. Now remember, this all has to be in twig. So you then you go back and you remove all these triangles and then you replace it with squares. See, last triangle facing away, straight all the way back with squares, and then there you have it, there's your gap. Now from there, you remove all those extra squares in the last triangle, you go three across with squares, and then cap each corner with another triangle, like so. Hopefully this is making sense. And then if you do that on all four sides, it will look just like that base over there. And then from there, it's literally just throwing walls up. I mean, it's as simple as just throwing up the walls like this, and then you just keep going all the way around, and then you fill in the honeycombing, and then you fill in your base last. So, it's not probably the moment you guys all been waiting for, shooting rockets at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna upgrade all those floors that I placed on top of the walls to stone. I'm gonna get some rockets, and we'll be right back. Okay, so you may notice that one, all the floors on top were upgraded to sheet metal. That was my recommendation to begin with. But two, all of the doorways have been upgraded to sheet metal. It's always a good idea to do that so that they can't soft side pick the doorway from either the corners, which this base doesn't have any, or from the floor looking straight down, which we proved in our comprehensive guide to soft side picking. Another thing you may notice is there's a gap between the outside honeycombing walls and your base walls. So in order to prevent your raider from finding that out, it is highly suggested that either A, you build multiple stories up, two or three, depending on how much resources you have, or B, use different things to cover that gap up. That could be sandbag walls, concrete walls, whatever you have to throw down over that gap so that they can't see, oh, hey, wait a minute, something's weird at this base. Maybe we shouldn't just blow straight through it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test the doors. We're gonna shoot all three doors here with rocket launchers, and we're gonna see how many rockets it takes to get into the inner portion of the base. Always smoke. Ok, 
Okay, there's door number one, and the wall, of course. And our stairs. Should have thought that one through. There we go. Alright, so now our inside walls and our inside door is unharmed. And we have shot four of our six rockets so far. Rocket number one. Rocket number two. And now we reload. If we open our outside door, our inside door and walls are completely undamaged thus far. Which really makes this, this double stacked wall design really nice because most people were probably going to wonder, okay, so if I shoot the outside walls with rockets, what's going to happen to the inside walls? Well, there you go. Not only will the walls be unharmed, but also the doors as well. So, this should be enough to get through this outer wall here. That's our door. Two. Alright, now that's gone. As you can see, the whole second doorway has been blown into, but we still have full health on these. So all in all, it's going to take them 12 rockets just to penetrate through your doorway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to reloading. And we're going to shoot to the corner over here. Now let's make sure this hasn't been damaged by the rockets, which it has not. Okay, good. So the corner is where we had the one problem where the one single wall wouldn't go into place. For some reason, just face punch set it up so that you can't overlap in that particular way. We're going to see if rockets will have an effect on something like that. So we're just going to shoot directly here in the center, and we're going to see which walls get damaged. Alright, get my hammer out. So first, we have this outside wall here on the side, and this outside wall there on the side. This inside wall was also damaged. But this back inside wall wasn't. So let's shoot a couple more rockets. And we'll see what happens when those walls start to fall down. Okay, rocket number two. Shooting at the center. And rocket number three. And last, number four. Okay, so we've lost both of our outside walls and one of our overlapping inside walls. However, this one wall here is completely untouched. Let me up. Let, let me up. Okay. Gonna make this complicated. Stairs. Alright, we'll go around then. No problem. So we have three walls completely destroyed, four rockets. This wall is not touched, that wall isn't touched, and this wall here isn't touched. So from this point, really the raiders could go any direction. They can shoot this one here, but they're probably going to shoot this one to try to damage the inside wall right here. So let's try doing that. We're going to aim for that little crack right there. Because that's if I was a raider, that's where I would aim for it. Try to damage that inside wall. So this one here, yep, yeah, those are all good. So fire one. See what happened. Okay, we hit the inside wall and did damage to these walls here. So those are foundation. Okay. Still damaging. Okay, still damaging. Oop, lag there. Alright, so we've blown through here. Blown that wall out. But we're going to need one additional rocket to get through. Unless you decide to, to pick it, or use a C4, or use grenades, whatever. We're just going to use rockets. And that now becomes 9 C4 to get into the base. Oh, we didn't blow that wall. I probably should have aimed at the corner over here. We're gonna we're gonna call that one nine because that was just me aiming at the wrong wall. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I am working on the circle design for a medium-sized circle tower. It's gonna be just as cool, I hope. Hopefully you guys will really, really enjoy it. It should take a lot more C4 because it is a much larger base. So it might not be possible for vanilla, or if it is, it'll be for a large group. 
However, this 3x3 design here, this should be pretty easily done by a smaller group, you know, three, four, five people. Solo, it might be pretty difficult. We're talking a lot of resources here. But for those of you guys on modded, you guys should be able to do this all day. So, Sergeant Solge, how to rust, looking at Sergeant Solge's double stacked wall base, and we'll see you in the next how to rust video. Bye bye. Thank you for watching How to Rust, a series for new players to the game of Rust. If you have any ideas for future episodes that could be useful to new players, please feel free to leave a comment in the comments section of this video.